Okay, so we have our div with the postcard class. And then we have some con some text inside that div. Why do we have this div? Because in the previous exercise, when we were doing the strategy, I said that when you're starting HTML, you have to you have to identify the tags. You can see here how they are being identified um, in colors. I'm gonna do a little bit slower the identification because it's the first time and I think it's important. Um, let me show you how I would do. I would, I normally take a screenshot of it and then on top of the screenshot, I start drawing, right? And I know because I know Microsoft Word the majority of these tags are similar to Microsoft Word. So this in Microsoft Word will be a heading, a heading one, right? So you would put this exactly like a H1, heading one. In Microsoft Word, this will be a paragraph. In Microsoft Word will be another paragraph. So we're gonna have this as a P tag. Both of them are P tags this one and this one. In Microsoft Word, this on the right side will be an image. So we are gonna have it as an IMG. That's the name of a tag for images. In Microsoft Word, this will be a button. So we're gonna have it as a button. And I think you can in Microsoft Word have inputs, but I don't remember, it's been a long time. So these are going to be inputs, the three of them as well. Input, input, input. Like that. And then the last part that is a little bit less obvious, but you will get the hang of it pretty quickly. It's the format. Like, for example, this is on the left. This is on the right. This, these two are on the left. These three are on the right. So for that, we're going to use the divisions. And the divisions are always more than what you think. Let me, for example, this one, I would make it in one division. Let me use a different color. I think yellow is not beneficial. Okay. So this blue one here will be one division. Then this one would be another division. Then this one would be another division. So I already have three divisions, but still, I think we need more divisions. Then I would add a division for these two and a division for these three. And then I would add again a division for this one. And no, actually, we don't need that one. My bad, my bad. Yeah, we don't need that one. And then a big division for all of them. That's basically how I would present this postcard. And you'll get the hang of it. I think it's not maybe the first time it looks weird. But you're, you'll start seeing that the real challenge in HTML, it's having stuff on the side of each other. So if I have these two divs like this, it's okay. doesn't really matter. But if I want to have them on the sides like this, then it's a real challenge, you know? So normally when that happens, what you do is that you wrap them both in a bigger div and that's how you can do it. You cannot have two divs on the sides without having a parent that shares without them to share sharing the same parent, okay? So that's like what affected most of my decisions here, that I knew that if I wanna have these two on the left and these three on the right, I would have to have them in a div and then in another div, and then I would have to wrap them in a parent div both. And the same happens with these two ones on the top. I needed to wrap it, uh, they have to wrap it in a, in a single parent like this. And then the, the green one outside, the biggest one or the outer one, it's because it's also recommended to wrap everything in a bigger div at the beginning. Like there's, there must be one div that is the parent of everyone, but also because this part right here, the black part also needs to exist, right? Like all this black background. So having a, having a, a div that sur surrounds everything like this, it's ideal because then you will be able to center that div or in the middle of the screen and then everything will, will center with it because Everything is a child of it. So that's how you basically make the decisions to create your layout. So then for this particular exercise that we are 
starting the first part. Here it is. We're here. All they're telling us is just to have a body background uh, black. Let's go to the CSS. Ah, well, we have to create a style.css file. So let's create it. Style.css. The style.css is the traditional name for the file that is going to contain all the colors, the background colors, the font size, like everything that changes the way that the website looks. Because remember that by default, the website looks like a Word document and you don't want that. You want it to look like a modern 2021 uh, website. So you normally have for every website, you have at least one HTML and one CSS. In the CSS, you will put all your styles and in the HTML, you will put all your HTML. And in this case, they're asking you just to copy and paste this. I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm going to explain it. It says body. I said the other day that we have three types of selectors. The other day, no, my bad. At the beginning of this postcard, I said that we have three types of selectors, the ID, the class name, and the tag name. This is just saying that the tag body must be in color black. So basically the entire website, because remember that the head doesn't show, right? So the entire body of the website, it's going to be black. So if we build this, we don't have anything because we're missing one thing that probably we're going to do it in the next exercise. Let's test this first just to see if it works. And it doesn't. It says, make sure you create the styles. Oh, it's looking for, for styles with an S. And this one is without the S. So I'm going to fix that. But in your case, I think it's going to be already fixed when you do this exercise. Let's see. Yes, now it's working. So uh, I forgot to name it styles.css. Yeah, and one thing that it didn't say, probably it said it before, I don't know, or it's going to say it in the future. Yeah, is that how to connect those styles. And I'm going to do it in the next exercise.